ramping the patient up. We, we go in, we see the oral access. Our next stop is going to be the epiglottis. Well, where can we find the epiglottis? It's at the base of the tongue. Your first step after you position the patient, you go into the mouth, you know you got a general direction to drive. But your stop is going to be the epiglottis. That is your first concern. And then, of course, once we find the epiglottis, once you get all the way up into Tomahawk, you know, it's like you take a trip somewhere far, and you start off in a really general direction until you get to the city, and then you have no idea where you're going. So your GPS starts telling you 0.5 miles this way, 0.2 miles this way, go down here, 2.3 miles, the house will be on your left in five miles, right? It gets more specific the closer you get to your destination. And that's exactly how laryngoscopy is. Once you find the epiglottis and you place your blade into the molecula, if you're, you were using a uh, MAC blade, then you can start to manipulate the airway more. And it's going to be very precise movements in order to expose the laryngeal opening. And so that's kind of what is, is illustrated here. It's more specific after you reach your halfway. PEEP is highly underutilized. I do not think we use PEEP enough. And I would venture to ask you, how many of you are actively using PEEP every single time you BBM a patient? I don't think anybody is. We should be. We have an intrinsic PEEP of about, what, three, four? When we put a patient, we intubate them, we need to have some sort of PEEP. We have to have something to hold that open. Watch this, guys. All right, so that's me bagging, right? Every time I'm having to recruit more alveoli, because it's going back down to a, a dead hang, right? Now, I take this PEEP valve, and I throw it on there. Now watch. See how it's holding it? It's holding it, it's letting it come back. Now I have all those extra alveoli that I can recruit. And now that fluid can start to move. If you're gonna do oxygenation on a patient, and we're going to oxygenate them and denitrogenate them before intubation, we have to use PEEP. Why? Because oxygenation, if we put a patient on high flow oxygen, that's gonna bring their SPO2 up to 100% within what, um, 30 seconds, a minute. But did we denitrogenate them? That's the thing. Our lung, our alveoli full of 79% nitrogen, about 21% oxygen. The goal is to push all that nitrogen out into the body, put it, replace it with oxygen. But the problem is nitrogen is what holds the alveoli open. So you can get something called absorptive atelectasis, where that nitrogen now has not there to hold it open. So we have to use PEEP to hold that open. Know where your PEEP valve is. It's the cooperative use of the suction catheter with the laryngoscope, and we're going to demonstrate this in the mannequin that you can actually, it's a two-handed laryngoscopy, except this is not the laryngoscope. This is the suction that decontaminates and helps you control the tongue. If you want first pass success for laryngoscopy, you got to figure out a way to get the mouth open, hold it open, maneuver the tongue properly onto the blade, maneuver the blade to get first to get the see the larynx. And if there's ongoing fluid contamination, yeah, you can use the suction cooperatively and leave it in the airway while you're innovating.
got great body posture. Look at him. This is great. He's doing everything he can to open a space on the right side nice. over his skull plate to deliver this. So I'm going to take this out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him the flexible suction cap. And I'm going to return this. Okay, so what is he? He wants to leave. Why does he want to leave the suction in the airway while he's intubating? Because of this. Okay? <laughs> right? So what he needs to do now is move the suction to the left of the plate and bury it into the hypopharynx. Put it all the way in. What's the other reason he wants to bury that in there? If he leaves it loosely in there, he'll suck all the oxygen that he's giving to the nasal if this goes into the hypopharynx, it stops the it stops the, the leaching of the suction out of the hypo out of the nasal pharynx. Okay, what I want you to do now, do you have a trachea tube? You need one, don't you? Yeah. Okay, here you go. I'm gonna give you a do it. You have a little holiday spice in that one too, don't you? I put pumpkin spice in this. <laughs> Come out, it's okay. This is so shit's up to the task. Show us the lyrics again. 